in the small, picturesque town of Eldridge, nestled between whispering woods and rolling hills, the legend of the true Easter Bunny was passed down through generations. Unlike the cheerful, chocolate-bearing bunny children adore, this creature was a sinister enigma, a shadow that chilled the hearts of those who knew the truth. The story began many years ago, on a foggy Easter morning, when the townspeople found their doors marked with strange symbols and their Easter eggs replaced with ones made of coal. Whispers spoke of a figure, tall and hunched, its eyes glowing red like embers, hopping through the streets in the dead of night. It wasn't long before pets started disappearing, only for their collars to be found hanging from the branches of the ancient oak in the center of town, as if displayed in silent warning. As years went by, the mysterious occurrences became more frequent during the Easter season. Livestock was found mutilated in the fields, and an unsettling silence hung over the town as if the very atmosphere was laden with dread. The old folks warned the children not to venture out after dusk during Easter week telling tales of the true Easter Bunny, a creature born from a pagan ritual gone awry, seeking to reclaim the festival it believed was rightfully its own. One Easter, a group of teenagers, skeptical and daring, decided to challenge the myth. They camped out in the woods, laughing and joking, dismissing the old tales as nothing but superstitions. But as the night grew deeper, the forest seemed to close in around them. An eerie hush fell, and a cold wind whispered through the trees. Suddenly, the laughter stopped. In the darkness, they saw it. A towering figure, its fur matted and eyes burning with an ancient, malevolent intelligence. It moved with a predator's grace, its every step deliberate as if savoring the fear it inspired. The next morning, the town awoke to a chilling scene. The teenager's campsite was in disarray, with signs of a struggle evident in the trampled undergrowth. The only clue to their fate was a trail of oversized, rabbit-like footprints leading deeper into the forest, ending abruptly at the base of the cursed oak. Since that fateful night, the true Easter Bunny has become more than a legend. It's a haunting presence that looms over Eldridge, a reminder of the ancient, dark forces that dwell just beyond the veil of our understanding. And every Easter, as the boundary between worlds grows thin, the townsfolk brace themselves wondering who or what will be the next to vanish, leaving behind nothing but whispered fears and the eerie echo of a hop, hop, hop in the night. The story could continue with new characters, uncovering more about the true Easter Bunny's origins, or following a determined protagonist's quest to unravel the mystery and put an end to the terror that grips Eldridge every Easter. Years passed since the disappearance of the teenagers, and the legend of the true Easter Bunny evolved into a sinister folklore, deeply embedded in the fabric of Eldridge. Each Easter, the town's atmosphere tensed with unspoken dread, its streets deserted as night approached, with every household quietly observing the unspoken curfew. Enter Alice, a young journalist intrigued by the phenomenon surrounding Eldridge's Easter, skeptical yet fascinated. She arrived in the town a week before Easter, determined to uncover the truth behind the legend. 
Her inquiries led her to the local historian, Mr. Harrow, a man whose eyes flickered with the shadows of untold stories. Mr. Harrow lived in a dilapidated mansion at the town's edge, its walls lined with ancient books and artifacts. He shared tales of the true Easter Bunny that went beyond the whispered rumors, speaking of ancient rites and cosmic balances disrupted by the town's ancestors, who had unknowingly awakened something primal and vengeful. As Alice delved deeper, she discovered diary entries from a founding villager, revealing a pact made with a woodland spirit to ensure prosperity. However, the pact was broken, cursing the town. The spirit, twisted by betrayal, became the true Easter Bunny, a creature of revenge, manifesting every Easter to claim what it believes to be owed. The night before Easter, driven by a mix of fear and curiosity, Alice ventured into the woods, aiming to witness the creature and perhaps communicate with it. The forest was unnaturally silent, with only the sound of her footsteps and the occasional distant thump, like the soft landing of large padded feet. Suddenly, the air turned cold and a thick mist rolled in obscuring her vision. She felt eyes upon her, and turning slowly, she caught a glimpse of it. A towering, grotesque figure with matted fur and piercing red eyes. It stood on its hind legs, watching her, its mouth twitching into what could only be described as a grin. Alice stood frozen, her heart pounding in her chest. The creature tilted its head, as if considering her, then bounded away with unnatural speed, leaving behind a trail of oversized footprints and a faint, echoing laughter that seemed to mock her very presence. Intrigued yet terrified, Alice returned to town, her mind racing with questions and theories. Her encounter with the true Easter Bunny only deepened the mystery hinting at a larger, more complex story that intertwined the town's history with the creature's existence. As Easter Sunday dawned, Alice prepared to delve further into the enigma. Unaware that her investigation would soon intertwine her fate with the dark legend of Eldridge, leading her down a path from which there might be no return. Alice's encounter with the true Easter Bunny became a pivotal moment in her life, transforming her skepticism into an obsessive quest for truth. As the sun rose on Easter Sunday, she felt an inexplicable pull towards the ancient oak in the center of town, its gnarled branches casting foreboding shadows. Underneath the oak, she found an array of bizarre symbols carved into the bark, their origins lost to time. The ground was littered with fragments of eggshells, black as night, contrasting starkly against the vibrant green of spring. The air around her seemed charged with a silent tension, as if the very earth was holding its breath. Compelled by an unseen force, Alice started investigating these symbols, tracing their connections to old pagan rituals that celebrated the renewal of spring. These rituals spoke of a guardian spirit, once benevolent, now corrupted, that demanded tribute to ensure the land's fertility. This spirit, she theorized, had morphed into the vengeful entity known as the true Easter Bunny. As she delved deeper into her research, strange occurrences began to unfold around her. Objects in her room moved inexplicably. Shadows flickered in her peripheral vision, and whispers filled her ears whenever she neared the edge of sleep. It was as if the creature was both warning and beckoning her, 
determined to find answers. Alice planned a night vigil at the ancient oak on the eve of the next Easter, hoping to confront the entity and perhaps broker peace or understand its motives. She equipped herself with various talismans and protective symbols gleaned from her research. Unsure of their power, but desperate for any semblance of security. That night, as the clock struck midnight, the forest came alive with an eerie energy. The wind howled, carrying with it the faint scent of decay and the soft, mocking tinkle of distant bells. Shadows danced in the moonlight, coalescing into darker forms that seemed to watch her from just beyond the light's reach. Suddenly, the ground trembled, and from the darkness, the true Easter Bunny emerged, its form more ghastly than before. Its eyes burned with a cold fire, and its mouth twisted into a grotesque semblance of a smile. It spoke in a voice that was both a hiss and a whisper. Its words a tangled web of ancient languages and chilling promises. Alice stood her ground, her heart racing as she confronted the creature, her voice steady as she demanded answers, her recorder capturing every sound, every uttered curse, and every whispered secret of the past. The night air thrummed with the power of old magic and new courage. The lines of history and myth blurring as Alice and the creature locked in a battle of wills and wits. As the confrontation unfolded, the truth about Eldridge's past, the origins of the true Easter Bunny, and the nature of the ancient pact slowly unraveled, revealing a tapestry of betrayal, sacrifice, and misunderstood intentions. But the more Alice learned, the more she realized that some truths are better left buried, and some pacts are too dangerous to unbind. The story could further explore the nature of the pact, the history of Eldridge, and Alice's attempts to either mend or break the cycle of vengeance that has held the town in its grip. Alice's encounter in the woods marked a turning point in her investigation. The first-hand experience with the creature fueled her resolve to unravel the truth. As Easter Sunday unfolded, she meticulously mapped out the incidents and sightings associated with the true Easter Bunny noticing a pattern that led her to an old part of Eldridge, long abandoned and shrouded in mystery. This forgotten quarter of the town was home to the ruins of what was once a grand estate, now overgrown with ivy and shadowed by towering gnarled trees. Local lore hinted that the estate's last occupants were deeply involved in the events leading to the creature's creation, Alice felt a magnetic pull towards this place, as if the answers she sought were hidden among the crumbling stones and whispered through the leaves. Armed with her camera and notebook, she ventured into the heart of the ruins under the light of a full moon. As she explored, she found symbols carved into the stone that matched those seen on the doors of Eldridge homes during Easter. Her discovery was interrupted by a rustling sound, and she turned to see a figure cloaked in shadows, observing her from a distance. This shadowed observer was an old woman, known among townsfolk as Mabel, regarded as a recluse and rumored to be a witch. Mabel approached Alice her eyes reflecting a knowledge too vast and ancient for comfort. She spoke of the estate's history, revealing that it belonged to the very founders who brokered the fateful pact 
with the woodland spirit. Mabel, who seemed to have an unnaturally deep understanding of the supernatural occurrences, explained that the spirit's transformation into the true Easter Bunny was not just for revenge, but also to maintain a balance that was disturbed by the town's ancestors. She hinted at a cyclic nature to the creature's appearances, suggesting that it was bound to Eldridge not only by vengeance, but also by a need to restore what was once lost. As the night deepened, Alice and Mabel delved into a trove of hidden records and arcane books in the estate's decaying library. They uncovered a prophecy foretelling the rise of a harbinger, an individual who could either seal the creature's wrath forever or unleash it fully upon the world. Realizing the gravity of her role, Alice felt the weight of destiny on her shoulders. The pieces of the puzzle were slowly fitting together, painting a picture larger and more terrifying than she had imagined. The true Easter Bunny was not just a mythical monster. It was a sentinel at the threshold of something far more apocalyptic. As dawn approached, with the Easter celebrations set to begin, Alice knew that the coming day would be pivotal. The town of Eldridge, teetering on the edge of myth and reality, was about to confront its past, with Alice possibly holding the key to its future. The stage was set for a confrontation, with ancient forces stirring in the heart of the woods, and Alice found herself at the epicenter, ready to face the unfolding mystery that the true Easter Bunny represented. As the first light of dawn crept over Eldridge, casting long shadows across the forgotten estate, Alice and Mabel prepared for what was to come. They knew the town was on the cusp of a revelation that could either save it or doom it to a fate entwined with the true Easter Bunny's dark legacy. Mabel, with her extensive knowledge of ancient rituals and the supernatural, suggested that they could use the old estate's ruins as a conduit to connect with the energies that governed the creature's existence. She believed that the estate held the key to understanding the pact and possibly reversing the curse that had brought the true Easter Bunny into being. Meanwhile, the townspeople, unaware of the night's discoveries, began their Easter celebrations with a mix of joy and apprehension. The children engaged in egg hunts and games, while the adults cast nervous glances towards the woods, sensing the undercurrent of unease that the day carried. Back at the estate, Alice and Mabel commenced a ritual, using the symbols found in the ruins to create a link between the earthly realm and the ancient spirit world. As they chanted in a language forgotten by time, the air around them thickened and the sky darkened, as if the world itself was holding its breath. Suddenly, in the heart of the forest, the true Easter Bunny stirred. The creature, sensing the shift in energies, began its journey towards the estate, its form blurring between the physical and ethereal as it moved through the trees. Alice, feeling the pull of the ritual, experienced visions of Eldridge's past, seeing the founding families as they made their pact with the woodland spirit, the betrayal, and the birth of the creature in a vortex of rage and sorrow. She saw the true Easter Bunny not as a monster, but as a guardian twisted by the pain of broken promises and lost heritage. As the ritual reached its climax, the boundary between the realms weakened true Easter Bunny emerged from the woods, 
its eyes glowing with ancient power, confronting Alice and Mabel in the heart of the ruined estate. The air crackled with energy as the creature, the town, and the two women stood at a crossroads of destiny. The confrontation was not one of violence, but of understanding and reconciliation. The true Easter Bunny, through a connection established by the ritual, communicated its pain and longing for the world it lost. It spoke of the balance that had been disrupted and the chaos that would ensue if not restored. Alice, empathizing with the creature's plight, realized that the resolution to the curse lay not in banishing the true Easter Bunny, but in healing the wounds of the past. The solution seemed to hinge on a sacrificial act of restitution, one that would require a deep personal sacrifice from someone intimately connected to the town's history. As the ritual's energy waned and the sun rose higher, casting light on the estate's ruins, Alice and the true Easter Bunny stood at a precipice of change. The next steps would determine if the cycle of vengeance and sorrow would continue, or if a new chapter of harmony and understanding could begin for Eldridge. The story of the true Easter Bunny, Alice, and the town of Eldridge was poised to enter a new phase, where the lines between legend and reality, past and present, would blur, setting the stage for a future where both could coexist and rectify the mistakes of yore. As the first light of dawn crept over Eldridge, a palpable tension filled the air, like the town itself was holding its breath. Alice, now deeply entwined in the web of the town's dark past, felt the eyes of the unseen upon her as she and Mabel prepared for what was to come. They knew this Easter was different. It wasn't just another year to endure the creature's wrath, but a turning point that could change everything. Mabel revealed that the prophecy required specific relics, items once belonging to the founders of Eldridge, to either bind or liberate the true Easter Bunny's spirit. These items were hidden within the town, lost to time, but necessary to complete the ritual that would decide the creature's fate. Together, they embarked on a race against time to locate these relics, guided by cryptic clues woven into the town's lore and landmarks. Each clue led them closer to the truth, unveiling secrets that many in Eldridge wished remained buried. Their journey took them through forgotten graveyards, ancient cellars, and even into the homes of unsuspecting descendants of the town's founders. Meanwhile, the town's Easter celebrations began with an air of forced cheerfulness, as if attempting to ward off the underlying dread with bright colors and laughter. Unbeknownst to the revelers, the shadows grew longer, and whispers of unease spread like wildfire, hinting that the true Easter Bunny was stirring. Sensing the impending confrontation, Alice and Mabel finally unearthed the last of the relics just as the evening set in. The sky painted with streaks of crimson and gold. As they assembled the items at the old estate, they prepared to perform the ritual that would confront the spirit. Mabel, with her knowledge of ancient rites, led the preparations drawing symbols, and arranging the relics in a pattern around the estate's gnarled oak, the very tree under which the original pact had been made. The air thrummed with energy as the ritual began. Alice, despite her fear, felt a surge of purpose, her role as the harbinger becoming clear. 
the ceremony's chants and the rhythmic beat of drums echoed through the night, reaching a crescendo as the creature itself emerged from the woods, its red eyes piercing through the darkness, drawn to the ritual's call. The true Easter Bunny, more massive and foreboding than any had seen it before, watched the proceedings with an intelligence that belied its bestial form. Its presence brought a chill to the air, a silent command that stilled the night. Alice, standing at the heart of the ritual, could feel the creature's gaze upon her, a weight that tested her resolve. The relics began to resonate, emitting a glow that grew brighter with each chant forming a connection between her, the creature, and the very soul of Eldridge. As the ritual reached its peak, the boundary between worlds thinned, revealing glimpses of the ancient, verdant realm from which the creature had been summoned. In this moment, Alice realized the true extent of the pack's consequences seeing not just the creature's wrath, but its sorrow, bound to Eldridge by both vengeance and a desperate desire to return home. The ritual's climax approached, with the power to seal the creature's fate in Alice's hands. The town of Eldridge teetered on the brink of salvation or damnation, its future intertwined with the mysteries of the past and the uncertain promise of redemption or ruin. In the charged silence of the ritual's climax, Alice felt the relics pulsing with an ancient power, their energies intertwining with the land's deep-rooted history and the creature's essence. The air crackled with potential, the barrier between realms growing perilously thin allowing whispers of the old world to seep through, filling the night with the scent of forgotten forests and untamed wilds. The true Easter Bunny, its form shimmering between the monstrous and the divine, seemed to be caught in a moment of hesitation, as if recognizing the significance of the ritual, its eyes once burning with malevolence, now flickered with fragments of a lost past, conveying a depth of emotion that belied its fearsome visage. As the ritual neared its end, the ground beneath them trembled, and the ancient oak at the center of the estate groaned, its branches twisting as if reaching towards the creature, beckoning it closer. Mabel her voice steady with the weight of centuries, guided Alice through the final steps, her words blending with the wind, carrying the promise of resolution and the threat of catastrophe. Just then, the town's clock tower chimed midnight, its sonorous tolls marking the boundary between Easter Sunday and the dawn of a new day. This moment, suspended between time, held the key to Eldridge's salvation or its undoing. Suddenly, from the shadows of the town, figures emerged, drawn to the estate by the ritual's power. They were the descendants of the town's founders, unknowingly tied to the creature's fate. As they approached the ritual site, the relics began to glow brighter their light illuminating not just the physical space, but also the connections between the townsfolk, the land, and the creature. Alice, now understanding her role as the harbinger, saw that the choice was not hers alone to make. The resolution lay in the collective will of Eldridge's people, their acceptance of the past, and their willingness to forge a new pact with the creature acknowledging the wrongs of their ancestors. With the final chime of the clock, a profound silence enveloped the estate, 
broken only by the creature's labored breaths. It stepped forward, entering the circle of ancient oak, the relics, and the gathered descendants. Here, in this sacred space, a new understanding was forged, a tentative truce between the human and the supernatural, between history and the present. The true Easter Bunny, once a harbinger of vengeance, now stood as a symbol of reconciliation, its form shimmering, caught between worlds. Its eyes met Alice's, and in them, she saw not only the reflection of Eldridge's tumultuous history, but also the glimmer of a possible future. One where the creature would no longer be an omen of horror, but a guardian of balance. As the ritual concluded, the air stilled, and a gentle light suffused the area, softening the lines between realms, between myths and reality. The creature, the town, and Alice were intertwined in a moment of unity, setting the stage for a new chapter in the legend of Eldridge, one that promised a future where the past's shadows gave way to a hopeful dawn. The night waned and the first light of morning began to edge the sky, casting a new light over the town, hinting at the dawning of a new understanding and the continuation of a story that, like the cycles of time, would always find a way to unfold anew. As the first rays of dawn filtered through the ancient trees of Eldridge, the air, once thick with tension, and ancient magic settled into a calm serenity. The ritual, a harmonious blend of old world mystique and the town's collective resolve, had reached its zenith. The true Easter Bunny, the creature born of betrayal and sorrow, stood silently within the ritual circle, its form no longer menacing, but imbued with a peaceful aura. In the quiet aftermath, the townsfolk, who had unwittingly become part of this historic moment, looked on in awe. The creature's eyes, once a fearsome red, had softened to a gentle glow, reflecting a tranquility long absent from its being, with a nod of understanding that transcended words. The true Easter Bunny turned, stepping gracefully towards the ancient oak, its figure blending with the morning mist until it vanished, leaving behind only the echo of a realm restored. The relics, their purpose fulfilled, crumbled to dust, scattering on the wind like whispers of gratitude from the land itself. Mabel, her face etched with the wisdom of ages, smiled at Alice, acknowledging the courage and heart that had led them through the darkness to the breaking of a new day. As the sun rose higher, casting light on the mysteries of the night, it became clear that Eldridge had been irrevocably changed. The legend of the true Easter Bunny would live on not as a tale of horror, but as a story of redemption and the mending of old wounds. The town, once shrouded in fear, now embraced its history with a newfound respect. Recognizing the thin lines that connect past actions to present realities, Alice, her role as the harbinger complete, felt a profound connection to Eldridge and its people. She had come seeking a story, but found herself part of a legacy that bridged the gap between legend and life. As she penned the final words of her account, she realized that the true story was not about the horror that lurked in the shadows, but the light of understanding and reconciliation that shines 
even in the darkest of times. And so, as the normalcy of daily life resumed, with children playing in the streets and families celebrating the peaceful conclusion of an extraordinary Easter, the town of Eldridge stood as a testament to the enduring power of unity and the enduring mystery of the cycles of time and nature. The true Easter Bunny, once a figure of dread, had become a guardian of balance, a reminder that even the deepest shadows are cast by the light, and that every ending is but a precursor to new beginnings. <laughs>